Welcome to a presentation on the name Poconocet, not Wampanoag, in 17th century Psalms. I'm Dr. David Weed, coordinator of the Psalms Heritage Area Project, and I'll be your narrator for this video. When anyone learns about the history of the indigenous people of southeastern New England, what they find is the history of the Wampanoag. Supposedly, this is the tribe of the Massasoit who first met the pilgrims in 1620, had the first Thanksgiving with them, fought the English in King Philip's War, and live here today. But Warner Gookin writes, from the evidence available, it is not a safe assumption that the Massasoit would have recognized himself as the great chief of the Wampanoag, largely because that was never the name of the tribe over which he presided. In fact, there's no documentary evidence whatever that Wampanoag was an early accepted name for the Indians of the Plymouth jurisdiction as commonly supposed. It was not until the time of King Philip that it was generally used and then, as will be suggested, it had a wider connotation than that of a tribal name. As Gukin states, the Indians of southeastern New England had no tribal designation for themselves other than territorial names of the well-defined sachemships which they occupied. There can be no reasonable doubt that the name of Massasoit's sachemship was Poconocet, subject to the usual variant spelling by the English, that extended from the Cape to Narragansett Bay. In 1621, Edward Winslow writes in Mort's relation, Tisquantum told us we should hardly in one day reach Poconocket, and from thence we went to Poconocket. In 1623, he writes in Good News from New England, I hired one to go with all expeditions to Poconocket, remained at Psalms, or Poconocket, and our return from Psalms, or Poconocket. Winslow and others who knew the language used Poconocet, never Poconocet, as the alias of Swams, Massasoit's hometown. There can be no doubt, therefore, that the suffix A-C-K and its softened form I-C-K designates the residence site as contrasted with the sachemship at large, that is, Poconocet E-T. In 1619, English explorer of the area, Thomas Dermer, dispatched a message a day's journey further west to Poconocket, which bordereth on the sea. In 1620, he refers to the Poconocets who lived to the west of Plymouth. The Plymouth Records of Volume 2 on page 23 mentions Poconocket as a country in 1641. In the 1662 Volume 2 records on page 21, he uses both Poconocut and Poconocut alias Sawamset. Notice that there is no Wampanoag in the indices of these records. In John Jocelyn's 1663 book, Two Voyages, he writes, The Poconocuts live to the westward of Plymouth and Massasoit is dwelling at a place called Somes, about 40 miles distant from the New Plymouth. And the royalette petty king now of the Pocanockets, that is the Plymouth Indians, is Prince Philip, alias Metacon. The 1665 Sellers map shows Poconocket country in large letters extending across the Taunton River, above another legend reading, King Philip's Country. The name Wampanoag does not appear. According to James P. Lynch of Historical Consulting and Research Archives, historically there never was a Wampanoag tribe per se. The term Wampanoag is a general linguistic descriptor. Its roots lie in the Algonquin Wapani, which literally means it dawns, or Easterner. It was a generalized term used by Algonquin-speaking tribes to refer to peoples to the east where the sun rises. In the case of Wampanoag, we find the suffix O-A-G, some Algonquin tribe dialects 
use AUG, which denotes near water or near a body of water. Thus, a literal interpretation of Wampanoag is a people who live where the sun rises near a body of water. The confusion seems to come from Adrian Block's 1614 map that used the label Wampanoos across southern Massachusetts. While there were several other spellings such as Wampanoos, the term Wampanoag never appeared on any map of the time. Even Hugo Allard's map published in 1673 and created from an earlier version continues to show Wampanoos in what would be today's southern Rhode Island. Horacans was a reference to Mohegans who were never in southeastern Massachusetts. In his research on Algonquin language, Blair Roods notes that the term Wampanoag is derived from the word Wapani, which translates as it dawns and connotes Easterner. He goes on to say, in the earliest sources, the term appears to apply to all of the Indians in southern New England and Long Island to the east of the Munsee. The story of the Poconocets who claimed a large territory reaching from Cape Cod and the islands to southern Vermont was swallowed over time and eventually lumped together with the Wampanoag Nation. The Poconocets, however, are a distinct people whose history and language was unfairly silenced after the King Philip War. In Daniel Gookin's Historical Collections of the Indians in New England, he writes, the principal nations of the Indians that did or do inhabit within the confines of New England are five, Pequots, Narragansetts, Punkanookwats, Massachusetts, and Pawtuckets. Notice there is no mention of Wampanoag in his work. In 1676, the first ever reference to Wampanoags occurs when Increase Mather wrote about, quote, the heathen people among whom we live and whose land the Lord God of our fathers hath give to us for a rightful possessions. As the Narragansetts and Wampanoags further defining Wampanoags as Philip's men in this rebellion, referring to the tribes that King Philip assembled in the war, but not a specific tribe. While many contemporary authors refer to the Massasoit's tribe as Wampanoag, well-researched authors refer to Poconocets in describing the Massasoit's Osamequins domain, including Neil Salisbury in Manitou and Providence, Nathaniel Philbrick in Mayflower, Jeremy Bangs in New Light on the Old Colony, and Kathleen Bragdon in Native People of Southern New England. Writing in 1702, Mather again refers to Philip and his Wampanoags, for so were Philip's nations called, in referring to the tribes who fought against the English in King Philip's War. Author Jeremy Bangs states, the war's displacement of people and confiscation of land necessitated a more general term, Wampanoag Indians, instead of Poconocet. From this and from the meaning of the name, the Easterners, it seems likely that Wampanoag could have been chosen by Philip as the name of the new pan-Indian nation which he hoped to form. But to tribes to the west, the Narragansetts, the Massachusetts, and the Nipmucks were all Easterners. In 1971, anthropological linguist Ives Goddard noted that Wampanoag was specifically derived from the Algonquin word Wampanoag, a Delaware Indian word for Easterner. Writing in his 1643 Key into the Languages of America, Roger Williams defines Wampanoag as quote, the people of the East, unquote, without identifying them as a specific tribe. On the other hand, it was a name under which all these diverse New England tribes could be united, and that was precisely King's Philip plan, 
that their lands might be recovered from the white invaders. In his Indians of Southern New England Early Period article in Trigger's Handbook of North American Indians, Bert Solwyn states, the name Wampanoag, which is frequently used by modern writers to refer to the same political unit as the Poconocet, does not appear in any of the early documents originating in New England. In the case of southeastern Massachusetts, this descriptor was used as a term of reference by the Indians residing to the west of the Indians who lived along Buzzards Bay, notably the Poconocet. This term of reference was picked up by the early colonists at Plymouth who equated the term Wampanoag with the Poconocet tribe, in contrasting to the neighboring Massachusetts Nipmuc and Narragansett tribes. Jeremy Bangs goes on to say, Wampanoag evidently means people from the east, and as such it seems to be a word Narragansett Indians could have used to describe their neighbors, the Poconocut Indians, and others farther east, such as the Nauset and the Pamet Indians. Bangs goes on to say, the possibility exists that the colonists learned to use the word Wampanoag from their contact with Narragansett Indians, who wanted to differentiate themselves from the people who lived to their east. So why did the name Poconocet change to Wampanoag? In an effort to eliminate Philip's warriors in the area who fought the English in the war, it became illegal for Poconocet people to use that name or speak that language. In fact, some say you could be shot on sight if you were a male over the age of 14. While Washington Irving published Philip of Poconocet, an Indian memoir, in 1814, by 1829, John Augustus Stone's play, The Last of the Wampanoags, and Samuel G. Drake's 1833 Book of the Indians of North America used Wampanoag. However, William Epps does not use the word Wampanoag at all in his history of the Mashpee Reserve in 1835 or his eulogy on King Philip, given in 1836. According to Lynch, there was not a Mashpee tribe in existence at the time of the historical contact, 1620, in Massachusetts. Mashpee, as a self-governing, distinct Indian community or enclave, having its own defined territory, did not come into existence until 1665, some 45 years after the point of first sustained Indian contact with non-Indians in this region. In 1655, Richard Bourne, a missionary, set aside land in Mashpee as a praying town for Indian converts. The Indians owned the land in common until 1842, when each Indian who had been in the district for 20 years or more received a 60-acre allotment. This assemblage was never a distinct tribe. Therefore, historically, the use of Wampanoag was first used to identify Indian bands and tribes who allied themselves with King Philip and his Poconoca tribe during his conflict against the English in 1675-76. The Mashpee did not become associated with this term until the creation of a Massachusetts pan-tribal association in 1928. After 1970, tribal names combined with the term Wampanoag began to be used, including Poconocet Wampanoag and Mashpee Wampanoag, even though tribes by those names never existed prior to 1928. In his 2007 testimony to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the historian Francis Hutchins said that the Mashpees were not an Indian tribe in the years 1666, 1680, 1763, 1790, 1834, 1870, and 1970, or at any time between 1666 and 1970. As Rita Lopez, enrollment director of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe stated, people don't understand that Mashpee didn't start as one tribe and there were over 60 bands of Wampanoag people that existed before colonization. 
Wampanoag was a generalized descriptive term, not a particular people or tribe. According to Travers, the Wampanoag were at first referred to as the Poconocat tribe, but it was later learned that the word Poconocat meant land of the bitter water, bays, and coves, and was the, desc the descriptive title applied in the whole area. They preferred the name Wampanoag, which was said to mean the coastal or eastern people. So in conclusion, there's no historical Wampanoag nation, tribe, or confederacy in existence in 1620. None were called Wampanoag until King Philip's War, which brought multiple tribes together against the English. It wasn't until 1928 when the tribes on the Cape were organized as the Wampanoag Indian Federation, despite the fact that they had no historic connection to that name. Walter Gukin concludes, it is one of the ironies of history that the most easterly of them, the Christian Indians of the Cape and the islands, are now known by the name used for the tribes whom they refused to aid in 1675 during the King Philip's War. There is, in fact, an historic Poconoca tribe, and over the centuries, those original people have returned to Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts and now number over 300. They are now telling the story of how their history has been overtaken by the Wampanoag myth. You can learn more about the Poconocets, the real tribe of the Massasoit, by visiting any of these websites, poconocottribe.com, the Facebook page Poconocot Tribe, or the Soames Heritage Area slash WP slash Poconocut dash tribe webpage.